Hello and good afternoon from Proactive New York. Joining me today is Sterling Griffin, President and CEO at Harbor Custom Development. Sterling, it's good to see you again. How are you? Great. Good to see you, Christine. Sterling Harbor recently announced the listing of six multifamily projects totaling to $278 million. Tell us a bit more about that. Uh, sure, Christine. We decided that uh, in order to help the uh, investment community understand better what our asset base looked like, that we would go ahead and list these projects that are all under construction. You're talking uh, six projects, 734 units, uh, totaling, as you said, $278 million. Um, and this is just the start for us. We have another 600 plus units behind them. And uh, we're very excited about being in the multifamily space. It's where actually my career started in the mid 80s. Oh, wow. That's pretty interesting to hear. So you must be the expert there. So uh, it was in your last earnings call that you did introduce multifamily into your portfolio. So can you kind of elaborate on why the company decided to enter this new market? Sure. I mean, in, in Western Washington, uh, it's you've had uh, rental rates uh, go up at it you know, some of the highest uh, percentages that I've ever seen in my career. And when you combine that with capitalization rates uh, being as low as they are today, it, the combination of the two uh, creates significant value in multifamily and other income properties. And when you have that combination, it's just too good of an opportunity to pass up. I mean, we have to strike while the iron's hot. It's a um, almost one in a lifetime opportunity in this sector, in my opinion. What do you think is driving this demand? Well, what's driving the demand is the 2008-2009 uh, financial crisis. It all started you know, over a decade ago when you had literally no inventory, either single family or multifamily of any significance uh, built or created nationally. And as a result, uh, you had this significant deficiency in homes and multifamily units. The shortage continued to get worse from 2008 to 2019, when COVID hit, it then exacerbated that shortage because millions of homes that would normally be put on the resale market weren't because people were stuck in their homes. They weren't allowed to leave. Uh, people couldn't go to work. No new homes were being built for a period of time. So you co those, that combination of those factors have made this shortage something the country's never seen. And uh, as a result, you have this great opportunity uh, today for companies like ourselves that understand the multifamily market and are able to execute quickly. So what kind of demographics specifically are you seeing that are requesting this uh, multifamily housing the most? Well, I think what you're seeing is uh, it's really across the board. Um, you know, as, as housing prices have surged because of the shortage, I mean, supply and demand, uh, first time home buyers, it's just much tougher for families or individuals to purchase homes. Uh, and when you'd have that, that kind of significant financial issue, then of course, apartments are the fallback and they're the housing of choice. Um, today, we're seeing uh, real interest in multifamily across the board nationally. Uh, in Western Washington, it's uh, a very, very strong demand for multifamily housing. Um, and if you look at it from the standpoint of what were the effects of COVID and the amount uh, or the size of the U.S. population that is determined they can now work from home after a year and a half, a year and a half of being stuck in their homes. Uh, so now you have the apartment markets and the suburbs, countryside, rural areas, you have extreme demand in those areas because why live in downtown Seattle or any other major city, pay 20 to 25% more in rent if you can work from home, have a larger unit 25 to 30 minutes out and you don't have to be at work every day. You're doing your work from home or you're commuting in. It just, it's an economic decision and uh, which started as uh, a flight from cities as a result of people were fleeing a virus. Well, that has changed now into an economic decision. Uh, people simply have the opportunity to be in a position to work from home. Why pay more? If you can work from home versus the city and not have to commute to work, why not get a larger apartment, larger townhome than uh, you could get in, in, in a city? Okay, so you're in Western Washington with these projects. Where else might you be looking to expand? 
Well, Christine, we're looking at the uh, no income stat, no income tax states uh, such as Texas, Florida, Tennessee. Similar to Washington, they have a significant migration of businesses moving to each of these states, as well as a migration of you know people looking for opportunities to start their lives or take a second job where they don't have the kind of taxing structure that you'd find in other states. And it's, it's an opportunity for us simply because our business model is to build 20 to 60 minutes outside of the urban job corridor. And when you combine that business model that we've had from day one, it syncs very well with what COVID has done because it's driving people to those areas outside of the urban core. You don't have to work from home. So let's get an apartment or a home 20 to 60 minutes out. Those are the areas where we want to be within these no income tax states, because if you're in these areas, Tennessee, Texas, Florida, Washington State, they are the fastest growing states in the country by far. Um, and that's where we want to be. You know, we, we don't want to be in areas where you don't have significant growth because it doesn't allow us to execute on our business plan. Absolutely. Well, Sterling, it was really good to get your take on this. Thanks so much for the time. Thank you for having me.